Hi everybody, I'm Brovandakar McHorvin Snell Ister for Kriminer and there is, it is How are you? <laughs> I just want to see if the editor can spell this uh, stuff. The world's still upside down. You guys are still holding on somehow. I don't know how. Let's go and talk about all the reasons you should just let go. <laughs> we do. If you're watching this, you probably want to kill yourself. Be sure to click the little bell on the bottom. We've been talking to YouTube a lot about the drop in view count. And a lot of it comes back to the point where they look at all of our stuff and they're like, okay, listen, back in the day, you guys used to do stuff that was more just informative and stuff that I think is a little bit more boring. And now that we've started goofing off a little bit more, they're like, the audience really like the more analytical stuff. So they're pushing us that way. But at the same time, they're also saying that the new way the YouTube algorithm works is that if you're a subscriber and you go to your feed, you do not see our videos. That's no longer a thing. The only time you're gonna see something is if it goes viral on its own through Reddit or social media or something like that, and then it pops up on the feed. So if you actually want to subscribe to us, what you have to do is click on the bell underneath the video. Just go ahead and do that. And I'm curious, after you guys click the bell, does it show up in your feed? Because I don't even know if YouTube is just like telling me stuff to like get me to go, go away kid, you bother me. Hey, let me know if when you click the bell, if it starts showing up in your regular feed. It's not really gonna show up in your feed. Maybe your subscription feed, but not the main feed, you know, and Android app and all that stuff. We're gonna have a lot of uh, little conversations here with the audience. Uh, I wanna know what you guys think about some of these things. Now this, this article here, the Pirate Bay and Showtime started doing something a little different. So ads, not paying the bills, right? Everyone just knows to ignore these ads. So they're not paying the bills so what they've done is they've added some JavaScript into the website. When you go there, they start using the resources of your computer to mine cryptocurrency. I mean, this is almost like malicious code. In fact, it kind of feels like malicious code because they're stealing your resources and they're using your power bill to pay their bills. So that's almost like a, you know, they're charging you in my opinion, because if they're running up your power, I mean, it may be pennies, but still you go to their website, your power bill is gonna go up by a few pennies. And if you go there over and over and over again, Man, all those pennies may end up turning into a cup of coffee. No, not really, but you know what I mean. How do you guys feel about that? Um, Showtime was using it as well for you know, just as a test. They said that they were just they were just testing it out, guys, because they want to make sure that if you're streaming their stuff, they can make some money from you. Now, would you guys rather websites use JavaScript to start mining, or would you rather see ads? And this mainly is going to apply to. Um, I mean, Pirate Bay, whatever, but it may, I think in the future, this mainly will apply to, uh, I guess, streaming services and services that just have a lot of overhead, you know, like Showtime, Netflix, that kind of stuff. They have servers that are just massive, I mean, massive overhead, right? Any extra resources you have in your computer above watching, you know, whatever content you're watching, would you be okay with them using those resources to mine cryptocurrency? What do you think? Would you trade that out? for content? Would you trade that out for a free subscription to something? Would you trade that out for advertising? I wanna know what you think. All right, so the i7-8700K and the next generation of Intel Coffee Lake stuff is right around the corner. And there's been a lot of leaks. I think Joker did a pretty good video on uh, some of the leaks coming out. But the 8700K, you know, it's a six core, 12 thread. I was a little bit worried because when you get that many, that many cores, uh, the frequency is usually not as high. But this one actually clocks in higher than the 7700K at the stock clock, and uh, it overclocks well. I can't tell you anything about any internal testing we may or may not be doing with this chip, but it looks like it's actually going to be able to gain game, and it may be a nice, happy medium uh, for that price range because you know Intel's had their six cores out on the you know the, the extreme platform or whatever the E or you know Bravel E and and X99, X299, and all that stuff. They've had those out for a while, the six cores and, and beyond six cores, up to 18 core now, if you got a couple grand floating around. This is an interesting price point for six cores, and this may be a happy medium for people who want, you know, a really powerful gaming computer, but also want productivity, because you've got extra cores. We'll wait and see what this is gonna be like in a week or so, like when the actual reviews start to come out. But as it is now, it's looking pretty good. All right, moving right along here. Guys, you, you, you on Tinder? Anybody out there on Tinder? We lost one of our employees in Asia for a few days on Tinder. Did you guys know that um, Tinder has a massive database of everything you've done, even the stuff you've removed from their site? So um, the author of this article here, 
Judith, she wrote an article about Tinder. You can ask in the EU, you can, you can ask, where's all my data? And they'll give you all their data. She got 800 pages of personal data back. So I just want to stand back for a minute and say, uh, guys, if you, if you use dating websites, they have a lot of information on you. And these dating websites, who knows how secure they are? I mean, anything seems like it can be hacked these days. Governments get hacked every 10 minutes. And then like we have the Equifax thing that got hacked. Make sure that if you guys are using one of these sites and you're throwing personal data on there and stuff that can be used to bribe, blackmail, or shame you, especially if you're someone on the internet, uh, don't, don't go look for me because I'm not on these things. Go look for me. I want you to waste your time. But anyway, uh, just know that there's a lot of data on you on there, guys. A, a lot. So people who've had strokes, they lose mobility in certain parts of their body. Sometimes they can't move their arms. Sometimes they have a severe speech impediment or sometimes they can barely talk at all. Uh, muscles stop to function. It's uh, basically their brain is disconnected from something in their body. Recently, I believe it's MIT. Uh, doesn't I just watch the video. You guys can watch the video if you want to. They've been injecting stem cells directly into the brain. And overnight, people have been regaining mobility. They're able to use, use their arms, speak again. So this is a huge development. If you know anyone who has a stroke, just tell them to get in line for this. Um, who knows how, how long it's going to be until like these things are, are made available uh, to the public. But the, I guess the main implication here is that, okay, just injecting stem cells into the affected areas in the brain can fix a lot of the problems caused by stroke. That's pretty huge. Some life-changing stuff there, guys. Uh, next up on the list, they're using genetically modified E. coli. Uh, and you can throw it in the stomach and it can be, I guess, essentially programmed to do certain things. Right now, the one that they have is an E. coli bacteria that's designed specifically to, it chomps up ammonia, which can lead to a level, level, fa level failure. I'm a failure at leveling right now. Um, it can, uh, you know, reduce chances of liver failure and that sort of thing, but that's just one step. Um, in the future, let's say we've got designer bacteria we can pump into your stomach. And then, you know, you can do all kinds of things with it. Maybe one that just eats sugars and, 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 and carbs. So you can just sit there and stuff your face with cake all day and be like, I am a fitness guru and I can finally eat cake again and French toast and all those things that I've haven't eaten in forever because I just eat mustard. So I cut, I cut a jet pie out of this. I was going to talk about how Congress needs to get rid of that uh, idiot, but we all know that, so I'm just preaching to the choir. All right, so um, there's an Australian town here and they've, they've implemented a single um, Tesla battery pack and they were able to save 1.5 million in grid connection costs. It's just a glance into the future um, with this kind of stuff, guys. Just as we add different battery packs, uh, we're gonna need fewer connections. We're gonna need uh, you know fewer reliance on, on the grid that's there. And uh, people are gonna be able to number one, self-sustain unless freaking governments make it illegal. And, uh, you know, people will be able to tap into local community power from, a, you know, a, a solar farm that's just over there at Steve's house and stuff like that. That's, that's kind of a future that the power companies really do not want, but it'll be very good for us. Imagine, like, you know, someone has a farm, like a privately owned farm. This is just beyond the, beyond the topic of this. But, you know, imagine someone uh, has, a, has a farm. They just throw a ton of solar panels all over the place instead of raising livestock and then everyone in the community they're like hey let's all hook up or you guys get together and you know like form a group that would be really cool if the governments will allow that kind of stuff because the governments always talk to local power companies power companies go hey we're busy polluting and making money could you help us out here and then the governments are like how much money you got oh yeah i love that you got any hookers too we'll take those yeah oh great we have a lot of places in the world also moving to uh rem moving to remove the combustible engine and we're talking like the next 20 30 years or something like that but you know china's saying hey we're gonna we're gonna move all to electric that's huge california is also now thinking about doing the same thing um we need to think about the implications of that and we also need to talk about just uh, batteries in general like batteries do they pollute well they don't produce i guess since you're not driving around in a car that produces a bunch of fumes you're not going to have any of those problems but the factories that make them can still have some pollutants in the future the big problem we're going to run into is, is lack of lithium and, and lack of cobalt and lack of all the stuff that we need to make these batteries i mean these are not uber abundant i mean they're abundant enough but i mean we need to start mining the asteroid belt or something like that but or or we need to come up with some new battery uh, types because people are right now are doing the whole thing where like yeah it's no big deal but it's not as vast a resource as oil even though oil's not going to be around forever either so when it comes to just resources and using them up we've always got to make sure we have enough so that's the thing i'd be wondering about is if the world moves all in that direction and then even more things require a battery 
what are the resource limitations going to uh, going to be? I am actually excited about a game Me console. Too. Like I'm freaking excited about a game console, guys. What's up with that? The Atari. Here it is. The Atari box is going yep. to be running Linux and AMD, and it's going to cost three hundred dollars. So. In June, when Atari was like, hey, we're coming back into the console game, like, welcome back, Atari. Everyone was kind of like, all right, well, you know, you've shown us some splash videos of wood paneling. Let's let's see what you got here. So now that they've come out and they've said that they want something that would be comparable to, uh, to a PC for someone that's not used to having a PC. So they wanted to make a console that felt more like you had options as you would on a PC for playing games than being stuck in like a little console zone, basically. The big thing for me on this, other than having a custom Radeon processor, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, AMD processor with Radeon graphics, that's probably gonna be an integrated piece so it won't be as fast as an mm. actual desktop PC, but for 300 bucks, yeah. they're also giving you access to the underlying Linux system. So you plug this thing in, it's actually a Linux box. I mean, you can you can run it just using whatever. I'm sure they're going to have like something that looks like the Steam OS. Oh, uh, you know, it'll probably be like a, an amalgamation. 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 <laughs> amalgamation. Amalgamation. Yes. But the thing is, is that they've also said they're going to allow you to install other stores. So installing Steam, mm. uh, installing the GOG Galaxy client that could be a thing on this unit. So you could just sit yeah. down and be like, okay, I'm gonna use this to plug into my TV and now I've got access to all these game libraries and that sort of thing. They want this to be a retro gaming machine and a current gaming machine. That's like what they're striving for. Yeah, I mean, it's rad. I'd still rather stream from my big PC to the TV using a Steam client of some sort, whether it's a Raspberry Pi or something mm -hmm. else, but I'm sure this can do it as well. And just the fact that you'll be able to do so many different things with it. And I mean, there's a gazillion applications knowing that this is a Linux box. <laughs> Just what we needed in 2018! Yeah. Half alone. Um, a mod based <laughs> off of a movie from 20 years ago or something like that. So, uh, <laughs> looks, this Kevin, guy is... It looks awful. ...is building the Home Alone movie in Half-Life. <laughs> He's making it so you have all the features including BB guns and tarantulas and firecrackers and Michael Jordan standy duct tape to a train. Uh, but you're going to be able to do all the Kevin McAllister shenanigans that happened in a much simpler time. I don't get, I don't care about this game unless they get Joe Pesci yeah. <laughs> to do a voice. <laughs> so a new study has been conducted in the uh, European Union, and they've discovered through this study that uh, privacy doesn't actually hurt uh, game sales, but it may actually enhance the game sales. That's the headline that everyone's going to read and run around and yell about, right? Yeah. One thing I, I think we need to mention here, right in the middle, they mentioned that there's about a 45% margin of error it's a pretty big margin well then and all this 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 yeah. study was done by asking people hey pirate do you buy games yes okay yes. yes you're good do you like to pirate games too sometimes but i also buy them great check mark science i feel like done. this i feel like this study is not worth a headline and there's no way to really do this scientifically but we can sit around and throw wild opinions yeah. does piracy hurt gaming does it help gaming this study so, doesn't really tell me enough to, yeah what they're what they're, what they're getting at is that for ev they, their numbers that they throw we're like for every 100 games that are pirated those people will also buy 24 games legally mm. so it actually kind of helps you know support the industry more than it does hurt the industry um which I, I don't, it's I don't well. Really know. They also say that like a lot of the people who pirate the games wouldn't. They weren't going to buy the game anyway. They just would rather play that than some free to play game. Mm -hmm. So here's my argument, guys. If you're pirating a game and playing it for multiple hours, you should probably buy it. Yeah, that's that's what I feel like. It, because if you care about the developer, you should probably buy it. And of course, if you're buying on Steam Store, you're also helping out Valve as well because they take a chunk. If you're buying it, wherever you buy it, whatever online platform, if you really want to help the developer, go go to their store and buy it directly. You know, like however you want to do it, buy it on Kickstarter or something like that. Mm. Guys, this is a little message. Support the freaking developers. That's what I'm going to leave with, leave this with. All these games have been removed yeah. from Steam. So this is one of the problems you have when you have a store that's no longer being curated is you're going to get some junk on there. And so one guy uploaded 173 different games that were various clones of like the same yeah. game. What was he trying to do? Just like cash in? He was in trying on to basically, basically what they were what they were doing is it was running bots and it was running card purchasing things. So you know you get all the achievement cards that you get and stuff that you can then turn around and sell. So basically, what people were doing is 
getting a bunch of their games out that are, you know, basically just clones of each other, and then using those to run and get collect all the cards, which they're then selling on the marketplace for actual money. The names of some of these games, Fruit Candy Pop. Yeah. <laughs> these are, this sounds, I mean, this sounds like every Android, that's every Android game ever made right there, Fruit Candy yeah. Pop. Ninja. Ninja. <laughs> Rage Parking Simulator 2017. I want someone to actually go out and, actually, and like, make real versions of these games. Like, I want to play Rage Parking Simulator 2017. I played this game twice today. Both times I tried to park, the person came up and was basically touching my bumper. And I'm like, I'm trying to back into a parking spot, but the guy behind me on the street was like, no one needs to parallel park here. And they, I just like honking, you know, give them the freaking East Coast salute, everything. Like, they're just dumb. They won't move. And then they just go, sorry. Like, sorry, I'm a piece of garbage. They just wave and say sorry. You know, I have been almost hit by so many different cars, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say this right now. So Oregon is not a state that requires driver's ed training. The state I'm from, Massachusetts, totally requires driver's ed training before you're allowed to set foot behind a wheel. And we have way safer drivers in Oregon because we're better at driving in Massachusetts, the end. Anyways, I have been almost hit by more people here in Oregon than I have in the entirety of my 20 something years living in Massachusetts, and every single time someone's almost hit me and I've been like, what the f you almost just endangered my life, <laughs> I almost died. They sorry. go, sorry, and wave, <laughs> like, sorry, I'm terrible at this. Sorry, that has nothing to do with anything. I'm <laughs> just probably gonna, It'll probably all get cut because of the way things have been going lately. Yeah, but I know. Skyrim Together is almost out. O October. So close, so close. So something we should have had a long time ago, maybe in the first place. Finally, a reason to want to actually play Skyrim again instead of it coming out on some random peripheral. Like, yeah, this is a good reason because this is what people have wanted from Skyrim since like, I don't know, day two of playing it. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, being, being able to do this uh, without a lot of bugs, especially if you're running mods, is gonna be a difficult mm -hmm. task. So if this is a smooth experience when it comes out and even playing Skyrim yeah. single player is not really a smooth experience. No, it's not. You know something, I think that uh, this guy here, uh, what's his name, Press Down to Jump, mm -hmm. has really uh, sort of one-upped the guys at Bethesda. Yeah. This guy has Player Unknown, uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, running on a Game Boy, well, a modified Game Boy color. It's just mm -hmm. he's put USB and all kinds of other things in there. Yeah. But yeah, there he is. He's, he's actually playing this. What now, yep. Bethesda? Why is Skyrim not on the Game Boy color? Huh? Yeah. You guys are slacking. This is not... For, for funny things. This is for real things. Yeah. Okay. We only talk about real serious things on this show. Uh, speaking of that, guys, the hardware. Uh, you guys may have seen the video a couple days ago. We announced our new hardware. The mouse is coming back. So we got some pre-orders up there right now. Go ahead and grab one. And uh, those are going to be in really soon. They're already on the boat. Shipping, 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 shipping. That's why they're up for pre-order. Yeah. And guys, I love the mouse. I've been using it for several months now. It's probably my favorite mouse in the history of the world because it's what I wanted. <laughs> buy a shirt. Yeah. You can also, aside from buying the cool Fennec products that are not going to be available, you can also buy these t-shirts yeah. that have been available. Yeah. Why are you taking so long to buy one? I probably already all have them, so we may have to release some new ones soon, but we'll do that after the hardware gets out of the, uh, you yeah. know, up there. We've got like four or five ideas that are just waiting to be released. Just basically edit the entire show out, please. <laughs> That's playing Atari in the future, guys. Oh man, go go stand on the street corner, do that, and see who you attract. Someone's on the road.